Hi, this episode's going to be a little bit different today. We're going to take a trip to the Toy Man Toy Show at Machinist Hall in the St. Louis area. I haven't been to a toy show in a long time, obviously because of COVID, but even before that, I hadn't been to a toy show in several years. I used to come to this show a lot, and in fact, I used to set up at this show. And this is my first time returning, so it's going to be kind of interesting to see if it uh, looks and feels the way it did many years ago, if anything's changed, and also to touch base with some of the dealers that I haven't seen in a long time. So join me and we'll walk through the aisles, look at all the stuff for sale, and talk to some of the dealers about what they're doing and why they're doing it. Machinist Hall is located in Bridgeton, Missouri. That's not in St. Louis City proper, but it is in the St. Louis area. The Toy Man Toy Show is held here eight times a year. So let's go through the front door and here we are in the lobby. There are vendors set up in the lobby before you even get to the ticket counter. The tickets for general admission are $5 for an adult. They also have an early bird price that I did not pay. I'm coming in well after the show has started. So we'll come back to these vendors in the front area. We'll look at them on our way out. We'll look at them later. Right now, let's get to the main floor. You have to go through this queue. And, you know, at the beginning of the show, there'd be people lined up here. We wouldn't be able to walk through this so fast. And they'd be lined up all down this corridor. Now here we are. We're almost to the main entrance. Got to get past Luke Skywalker and, excuse me, pardon me. And you see that there's a vendor right inside the door. He's got some He-Man and a lot of wrestling figures, tons of wrestling. I am not into wrestling at all. Lots of wrestling. I'm wondering if some of this Christmas music on the overhead is going to get me a copyright strike. I hope not. To the right, this used to be a snack bar. Now it's a dealer space, but it used to be where everyone went to get their snacks. And here is the main floor and the balcony. You can see up there, there's two stories. There's the bottom main floor and then there's the upper balcony. And this is the grand money shot. Yes, I spent $20,000 on, on this shot alone. Actually, there's, it, there's an elevated platform in one corner where you can stand and get a good shot of the whole place. 200 tables. 200 tables, or over 200 tables, and 100 vendors. Lots of Star Wars. Lots of Star Wars. Now, we're just going to look around. There's a Crypt Keeper mask. Some turtles, and... Um, on the wall, I see some vintage Playmates up there. Vintage Playmates in Waterworld. Oh, there's a, <laughs> there's something I haven't seen in a while, Waterworld figures. So we'll, we'll look around a little bit, but then we are gonna have interviews. We're gonna have interviews with some of the vendors in a few minutes. But first, let's just look around and, and see what we can see, see what's interesting. Vintage Mego. So this vendor has a lot of vintage Mego toys. And he has new Mego too. He has a good selection. These are cool. And these are in really good condition too. And that Hulk with the denim card, that's nice. Wizard of Oz, now Waltons, that's that's a Mego set no one really wants. But but Star uh, Starsky and Hutch. That's catching on. I hear more collectors talking about that. I think that's starting to get popular. Wizard of Oz, one of the best sets Mego ever produced and one of the least valuable today. There's quite a ratio between the high quality of the toys and the low resale value today. Now these munchkins used to be big dollars in the 90s. I don't know if they're still a big deal. I don't think they are, but in the 90s there was a lot of buzz about these mun munchkins. And here's some vintage Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I had, of course, all of these. <laughs> uh, years ago, I had a huge Playmates turtle collection. You name it, I had it. 
and I could not give them away. You know, the idea of getting $175 for a Rat King, forget it, I couldn't get $5 for a Rat King. More, more uh, Big Jim and Migo and what's up here? Uh, well, this is cool, so Star Trek the motion picture Migo figures. That's a nice set. Again, not a lot of values in the collector market, but very nice toys. And here's new Migo. So I, I, I like that this, this is like one-stop shopping for all your Migo needs. He's got old and new, and they're all in great shape. Great selection. Even has the brand new 14-inch monsters. And they do look nice in their packages, that's for sure. And this is the first time I've seen the Gorn in person, the 14-inch Gorn. He's impressive. Not really into Kiss. I wish they'd make a ghost set like that. That'd be awesome. I'd be all over that. Lots of cars. Um, and I have zero interest in cars. So I think I'll take this opportunity to talk about the show. Like I said, there's over 200 tables, 100 vendors in 13,000 square feet. Held eight times a year. And the Toy Man Toy Show started in 19... 90, 1990, by Kent McQuillan, who has passed away. But you can see an interview with him in my documentary, In Love with Toys. I conducted an interview with Kent McQuillan in the 1990s, 1995. Oh, now here's some vintage Star Wars. Look at these prices. These are pretty good pieces. I can't really speak to whether the prices are on target or not, but condition-wise, and they're pretty nice, aren't they? Uh, and these aren't the only good vintage Star Wars figures that they had. I mean, there's other vendors that had comparable things. So this is, this is good stuff. This isn't junk. This isn't just Funko Pops. This is pretty good stuff. I was actually surprised by how much vintage material I, I found at this toy show. I mean, that Empire Strikes Back Chewbacca, that's, what, that's great, and Empire Strikes Back Greedo. <coughs> I'd love to have, I mean, I, I just collect monsters just to keep my sanity. I, I oh wow, look at that Stormtrooper. I love how white they are. <laughs> On you know, on open cards, and how pristine they look, as opposed to loose ones, which are always yellow and stained. But uh, to keep my sanity, I strictly just stick to monsters because if I let, my, as I did in the '90s when I was a generalist and I collected everything, if I let myself go, oh my gosh, what would I do? I'd be in big trouble. And uh, there was more than one Castle Grayskull. Oh, uh, more. These look like vintage Star Wars pieces. And there's quite a bit of shadow stuff from the uh, Kenner of the Shadow line from the 90s. And I did have my fair share of shadow items in the 90s. And I like this Mark's Gorilla, this target game. I mean, it'd be better if it were in a box, but still, it's, it's a cool little toy. If it were complete in a box, it'd be really something. So this was this show was founded by Kent McQuillan, who was known as the Toy Man, and he's since passed away. But you can see his interview in In Love with Toys, the documentary got made in 1995, and his family carried on the tradition of putting on this show. It's now run by his son Chris McQuillan. Chris is the one who owns Toy Man now. That's a cute. E.T. item. I don't know if that's official or bootleg. And some nice Dungeons and Dragons toys. And I used to have a bunch of Pee Wee Herman. I had Pee Wee everything. I had a great Pee Wee Herman collection. I don't have any of it now, but I, it was, <laughs> I had it in the 90s. I had a lot of that stuff.
Mario Brothers. Now, I saw that first run at the theater. I remember, not to get all dramatic, but that, that night was the last night I saw my grandmother alive because I stopped by her house to visit her on my way to seeing Mario Brothers. So I stopped by and said hello for a bit, had a little quick visit, and then went on to see the movie. And she passed away a few days later, so that was the last time I ever saw her. So when I think of that Mario Brothers movie, I think of my grandmother. I had a lot of Best of the West as a kid. And I, I remember liking those quite a bit. The Best of the West, Marx figures. And this is kind of funny, <laughs> this chewy food. That was a weird moment in a weird movie. I mean, just such a misguided film altogether, but particularly that moment of Chewie eating that, that creature. Um, I, I think these are, no, no, these are not vintage. You can tell from the inserts, the bubbles, you know. And that's not vintage. Now, Rogue One, I really liked Rogue One. I thought that was one of the best Star Wars movies ever made. And unfortunately, it was followed by maybe the worst Star Wars movie ever made, The Last Jedi, which just killed Star Wars for me, as it did many other people. Uh, let's see here. Sectars, that's nice. I mean, it's not in good condition, but sect Sectars is a line I'd like to collect one of these days. The A Team, that's a nice little set. What else do we have here? Mostly modern stuff. Yeah, not too interested in this. These are cool. They're modern, but they're cool. Come on, where's, where's something else that... Where's something else I might like? I have that They Live Nada figure from NECA. I have him and I have his buddy, but I don't have the aliens. I need to get the pair of aliens. More NECA stuff. NECA modern horror characters. NECA classic horror. And yes, there. I, I'm not showing you all the Funko. Oh, here's that Mondo creature from the Black Lagoon. What, how much do they want for this? 250? I think it was around 200 new. And, you know, I didn't like that Mondo creature. I didn't buy it for that kind of money. I expect perfection and it just, eh, it, it, something about it looked wrong. So I, I saved $200. So these are all vintage posters as far as I know. This guy has been setting up at the show a long time. Here's that elevated platform I was telling you about on the right. Okay, that's enough shopping for now. Let's meet some of the vendors and talk to them about why they're here and what are they selling. Hi, I'm Andy. I'm here uh, selling some toys today at Toy Man Toy Show. Um, the cases, I've got some nice monster figures. I've got some A-High monsters here. Um, Mego monsters. Um, some Toy Island monsters, those are pretty scarce. Um, I've got some vintage 70s jigglers here as well. And a Moldorama Frankenstein over here. Oh, and then more goodies over here. Some Mego and stuff like that. I've got a couple color forms outer spacemen down there in the corner. Some nice um, Major Matt Mason carded pieces here. So just kind of a little of everything. What's the most popular stuff? You know, right now, I've, usually Star Wars stuff sells really well, but today um, not much is selling at all. Um, I sold a couple of $6 million man items. Those are always pretty popular. Um, but usually things like Star Wars or, you know, those those usually sell pretty well. 
what's your favorite stuff? Oh, the monster stuff. I pretty much like the 70s monster stuff more than anything. 60s and 70s. Of the good Star Wars stuff has already gone. This is kind of a good one. Um, that's the Droids Factory R2. Usually these are pretty beat up. Um, this guy's got a really nice sticker and, and the chrome's really good on him, so that's kind of a good one. Um, this is a really, really, really nice Boba Fett. His little gun's right there, but you know, he's in terrific condition. <laughs> yeah, he's, um, and I don't know the different variations and things like that on the guns, but like, um, that's the actual blaster that goes with him. <clears throat> um, some wind ups and, um, found the new, uh, Elvira Toonie Terrors. Those are kind of hard to find right now. <clears throat> this is a, a great, awesome piece. Because it's a greeting card from the early 70s. You can't keep a good man down, get well quick. Yeah. Kind of a fun piece. Um, <clears throat> what else? Here's a nice uh, A-Team set from uh, Argentina. I would say absolutely not. That's a set of the NPC monsters. Like, um, uh, I think those colors that they're kind of muted colors um, are more indicative of the ones that came in the Frito-Lay bags but I'm not entirely sure about that those all came together as a set which you know sometimes the yellows or the the oranges rather don't match up as well <clears throat> No, you can't reach me. You got to come to Toy Man. I'm unreachable. What about these pirates? These are cool. I love those pirates. Those are um, like like uh, '90s era Mego type, you know, eight inch figures. Um, I can't remember the company name. Maybe Paco, I don't remember. <clears throat> I found those not too long ago in a seaside gift shop uh, in uh, South Carolina. They were in a, just hanging up in a gift shop. So you never know, sometimes that stuff is still out there hanging around. Okay, we have uh, Star Wars Power of the Force at it. Uh, are really hot right now. The uh, Echo Trooper and uh, Ahsoka. This is one of my favorite pieces. I really don't want to sell. It's just a big blow mold of a snowman head um, that goes on a lamppost in someone's yard. Down here we have more Star Wars. Uh, around here we just have a hodgepodge of loose action figures, five, ten, fifteen dollars a piece. Uh, over here we have something kind of special. It's a little Kittle's house from the 60s, and it's packed full of Kittle's. So, come down and buy me out. Hi gang, my name is Gary Harrison, and I'm a vintage toy collector and um, dealer here at the St. Louis Toy Man Toy Show at the uh, Machinist Hall on the 
Rock Road. And anyway, I'd like to show you some of my products, but um, I try to bring a, a, a vast array of merchandise to satisfy all my customers, from women, some of the older dolls from Jane West and Tammy, and, um, and then I have um, things for the kids. A lot of times I'll have magic sets or little toys that they like. And I'm primarily a monster, vintage monster toy collector. I love monster toys. And I have in my home probably close to a half a million dollars worth of Japanese robots uh, from Mark's Toy Company in the 60s to, to uh, larger toys like Great Garlou, the robot, and um, some of these names you'd have to look up on the internet. These, these Sokies from Palmolive, um, company that the boys used to have their bubble bath solution in and they're they're worth some cash now um, but I I love blow molds um, I love vintage clackers I found these in a in an old um, variety store down south I bought two boxes of them they used to break your wrist but the original ones would explode the plastic would break because it was styrene back in the 60s and it was a lot larger diameter and a lot of the pieces would fragment off and hurt people so the CPSC came along and computer Pro consumer product safety commission came along and in and made them you know bring this up to safety code but a lot of my things uh, are real vintage like the Rex Harrison um, talking puppet doll that's an older Dr. piece Dr. Doolittle yeah was Rex, Rex Harrison was the actor that played that and um, but we just have a vast array of, of uh, toys some of my original fireworks there some of the old fireworks shrunken heads some of the old Viet or Super 8 and eight millimeter movies. Frankenstein, Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein and Lady Gore Godiva. Um, of course, I have the newer DVDs also. Some of the titles are War of the Worlds, Pet Cemetery, some of the great you know movies that. Now the James Bond drawing set. I I just uh, received that today from a fellow uh, toy collector. That's valued at about $175. Um, I picked it up for considerably less, but that'll probably go in my own private collection when I get home. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, pretty rare actually. And I had that Goodyear blimp when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a vintage mint in the box, never been um, put together, so it's got all the parts. It's even got these little light cards and you can make different uh, um, signs you know at, yeah, it rolls around yeah it's like a motorized light just like the Goodyear blimp basically it's a really cool model I love How about that. the toy island robots over here okay the uh, robot house or you say toy island yeah, I was wrong robot house is right and robot house made four of these they made they also made the Frankenstein robot but these are just beautifully articulated Tin Japanese tin wind-up robots. I'll show you one, um, and you can get a feel for how beautiful these are. It comes with a certificate of authenticity and a. I just dropped that, and a uh, a serial number on it, and then you can see the the beautiful artwork on the faces. It's just just amazing some in the hands the claws look real like they're real ivory little feet but you wind it up with a key which is kind of behind the robot I don't know if you can see that and each one has a key and you wind it up and then they do their walking and growling and things yeah thank you sir we'll put that back in there in the car. Yeah, it's hard to do it. Okay. But anyway, um, I have everything from Mark's Viking figures. Okay. 
um, Batman flashlight and a Bullwinkle periscope. That's probably from the 60s, their Bat or Bullwinkle. And then I collect older comics, Boris Karloff. Um, I collect Munsters comic books, Elvira, a lot of those types of things. This is a good piece back here, this chimp. Yeah, the Jolly Chimp. He's mint in the box and he works. That's about a hundred and fifty dollar battery operated toy nowadays. Yes it is. And we also I don't want you to forget this piece because I just picked this up at a Goodwill thrift store, but this is an actual replica of our governor in Illinois, J. B. Pritzker. Okay, well we don't but want to get he, political here. He's got his hands kinda in your wallet. But yeah, yeah I won't go really, I wanna go to that. I don't want to get political, but That's I just saw it. This flying rocket. Yes, it is. It is very nice item. Let me pull that out. This is from I think the late '70s, early '80s, and it's a Star Wars R2D2 flying model rocket from Estes Rocket Company, which is still in existence. And you can see the beautiful plastic pieces that go on this tube, and of course your inner tube would have uh, kind of like a little bracket to hold the engine in here and then you fire that off on a rocket stand and it'll go way up I assume probably two or three hundred feet in the air and come down with the recovery system that's a nice iconic piece right there Star Wars I don't think they made a CP3PO one but I know that this one was made and uh, of course at home I have a vast array of collectibles such as you do, Ray, and it's just been a lot of fun to do. Thank you very much for talking with us today. And my name again is Gary Harrison from Ramsey, Illinois. Very nice to see you guys. Have a great Sunday. Introduce yourself. Who Hi. Are you? What are you doing here? Hi, I'm Tom Stockman. I've been setting up here for 32 years. I used to set up in that corner. And then about five years ago, they moved me over to this corner. So I'm always in the corner, but I'm one of the oldest sellers here. There's, there's five or six of us that have been here since day one. One of the oldest, like, been doing it the longest? Well, it's been doing it the longest, yes. Okay. Yes. So. So what kind of stuff do you collect? What kind of stuff do you sell? Well, I collect monster toys, and I collect Batman 1966 toys, and I collect, I don't know, whatever I think is cool. I collect Ray Harry has and stuff. I collect stuff on uh, some of my favorite movie stars like Charles Bronson and Clint Eastwood. I collect paper on those actors, a couple other, Pam Greer, Barbara Steele. Some of my favorite movie stars I collect. Um, so I have a lot of mem movie memorabilia, um, but it, toys. What do you bring to the shows? Same well, stuff or is it kind of a different inventory? I, I tr well, it's about half the same stuff. I've got a basement full of of bins of toys so I try to switch it out every now and then this this month I didn't bring as much as I usually do but that's okay well, tell, us, tell us about what you've got here well I've got some monster stuff but I don't really have anything super vintage I've got a lot of 90s monster stuff like here's an old puzzle from the 90s remember when the monster stamps came out they, they had a lot of merchandise that went into that a monster table oh here's the monster stamps right here in this cool little binder uh, oh yeah, that's cool. That is kind of cool. Um, as far as monster stuff goes, well, this is a monster's magic slate. Somebody told me it was about a year ago. They they go, oh, I've got the monster's magic slate. I'll bring it to the toy show, and I assumed they meant the Universal Monsters Magic yeah. Slate because they did make one, and I was all excited. And then the guy hands me that, which is <laughs> some generic, stupid cartoon monsters, but that's okay. Um. Let's see, there's a Wolfman puzzle, I guess from the 80s or maybe 70s. Yeah, 70s. 70s, that's kind of neat. Um, a few odds and ends. Yes. This? Here's Bo. Oh, that's a Bo Derek, that's a set of Bo Derek trading cards. I think there's, I mean, they're all from Tarzan, which is this really lame uh, Tarzan movie she made in the, I guess around so it's really, 1980. They're really Tarzan trading cards. Yeah, they are. Yeah, everything's from the John Derek scrapbook. I got a bit of, I got to try, I guess kind of got a variety, a little bit of everything. 
Is there anything here in particular you want to point out anything really special? Well, you probably have this, but the motorized monster maker well, set is, is kind of awesome. You know, it's almost too bad because this came out what 67, 68. It's too bad they didn't do, they didn't license the Universal Monsters and had a motorized Universal Monster Maker set because then everybody would want it. That would, that would be one of those uh, beloved toys there was. But they, these are like generic monsters. That's okay. They're pretty cool. Yeah. And that's an original Marks there, right? Yeah. That's a Nutty Mad. The original Marks Nutty Mad, they called them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah that's the screaming creature. King Kong to me, I like that. I mean, they're both cool, but that King Kong poster yeah. art, you know. It does have a, a, a kind of a different expression on his face than you're used to say. I've never seen those water clothes. Yeah, I think they came out maybe 20 years ago. Uh, Frankenstein mask. Yeah, I guess they always bring a little bit of everything. Yeah. Well, I've seen your collection. I haven't seen it lately. Mm. But you I haven't seen it since I moved, probably. You've got quite a collection, though. Oh. I do, I do. When I was married, I had a my whole basement, finished basement, wall to wall. Every square inch was covered with movie memorabilia or some kind of toys. But then I moved to my apartment three years ago, and now the whole apartment's covered with, with movie memorabilia and toys, which is kind of nice. Uh, we're looking to buy a new house, so they will have even more walls. Well, we're looking, we're looking. We go looking at the houses on Sundays when we can. And uh, so then I'll have it up again. But it, right now it's up. It looks pretty good, my collection. Well, yeah. Maybe one of these days I can come over and do a video at your they, Yeah, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, you'd like, you'd like a lot of the movie memorabilia, especially that I got. If I got a <clears throat> When Dinosaurs Rule the Earth 6 sheet, 80 by 80, hanging in my living room. So I could never have when I was married. All right, so anyways, I'll be back for the Christmas show, which I think is December 12th or something like that, and I'll bring lots more stuff. So I'll have uh, it's more rare stuff. So show up again, and then we'll have more stuff to show up. So hi, I'm, I'm David Lee of Castaway Toys, and I'm speaking with uh, the master of horror, Ray Castile. What an honor to be here today. I'm at the toy show here in St. Louis, and I'm displaying... Uh, you know, modern toys, toys that I've, I've collected in the past and, and, and selling toys, and, and my, uh, my dioramas that I make for action figures because action figures are great, but in the package, they don't really show much. So when you take them out of the package, what do you do with them? Put them on a shelf? So these are handmade dioramas, basically, so you can display your action figure in the environment that they were meant to be in, maybe from the movie, maybe from the comics, maybe from... You know, just your imagination, but, uh, but that's what this is about. And they're all they're all handmade, uh, made predominantly of XPS foam, right? Some have LEDs in them, uh, but yeah, it's just been a it's just been a fun hobby. During the pandemic, being at home the whole time, you, you pick up new things to do, and so it's a good way to display your figures in a, in a dynamic environment as opposed to just sitting them on a shelf. That Godzilla is, is one of my personal favorites. Um, tried to make it to scale with tiny trees and actual Japanese kanji to, to talk about good old Godzilla. Who doesn't love Godzilla? got some other stuff sure yeah so I so I'm, I'm actually opening a shop in Kansas City called Castaway Toys Collect and Collectibles and so I'll be carrying modern figures as well as vintage figures and our own plastic zombie toys figures and anything cool and collectible that I can come up with to put in that shop it's going to be a kind of a destination shop there in Kansas City and I'm excited I've got some other vendors interested in, in displaying their stuff and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a wild ride. We're gonna see how it goes. I interviewed David Lee about his company, 
And you will see that interview as well as my review of the new plastic zombie Wolfman figures in an upcoming episode of Basement of Horror. But now let's go on to the balcony. Now here's another money shot. Yes, this costs lots of money to get this shot. This is a great place where you can, up in the balcony obviously, where you can see the entire floor. See all the, all the dealers, all the activity down there. Now there's not much in the way of vintage toys on the upper floor, but there was this dealer. They had these vintage Playmates Turtles figures. And once again, I had all of these. <laughs> at all of these things and as I said before I, you know 230 I couldn't give these things away literally uh, I took them to shows and nobody wanted them and this is the I believe this is the recent Castle Grayskull that was just made this past year it looks very impressive like I said there's not a whole lot of even though you see toys here there's not a lot of toy collectors or should I say toy dealers on this upper floor. It's mostly arts and crafts. Sometimes they have uh, celebrities doing signings up here, but it's not like the bottom floor. You're not gonna find a whole lot of toys for sale, hardcore toy dealers, not a lot of vintage stuff, mostly arts and crafts. Not a lot up here that really interested me. Uh, that really that turtles table was the best thing let's see here pretty sparse uh, is that trash can for sale I don't know there's a few toys here a few interesting toys at this, in this space I had a lot of guys but I uh, this is a, I believe that's a vintage Star Wars game, and, and we're going to see the reissue of that in a moment. That I believe that's a vintage one that we just saw. I really like this Cantina Band figure from the 90s. I, I remember when that first came out, I really liked that figure because there wasn't, there wasn't any kind of Cantina, Cantina Band player figure in the 70s. They never made one. You know, like I said, there's just not a whole lot up here. It's, <laughs> it's pretty sparse. Here's a Snoop Dogg. I think that's Snoop Dogg, isn't it? A celebrity figure on the right. Yeah, that's Snoop Dogg. Um, you don't see a lot of celebrity figures these days. Those, those were really big in the 70s. And they kind of had a resurgence in the 90s in a limited way but you don't see it a lot now. There's some Billie Eilish figures at Target that would be interesting if I were a generalist and bought a little bit of everything. Okay, so this, this table is really the only one that, of the arts and crafts kind of stuff that I thought was really interesting. This, this one is specialized in selling sculptures based on H.P. Lovecraft and Lovecraftian themes and characters. And there's a creature from the Black Lagoon, fossilized hand right there. And you know, the creature is kind of Lovecraftian. He's definitely inspired by uh, Lovecraftian aquatic beings. Some Cthulhu sculptures. And uh, this big pointy thing, <laughs> look at that. That looks like something you would use in uh, uh, some kind of occult ritual and I don't want to know what you do with it but I think it would probably come in very handy in some kind of dark occult ritual in a, maybe a temple somewhere oh look at this red crab guy he's cute he's a neat little guy I like him okay so now we're going out of the show this is in the front by the lobby and uh, I used to have one of these these Wampa sets in the 90s. I remember I really liked him. And I think I might, I almost inquired about that actually, that Wampa. That's something I'd like to reacquire because he, he's a monster. That's a nice set. That's a nice condition. 
I, I didn't ask the price. There was another one at the show, and I think the other one was only 45 bucks, but it was kind of beat up. Let's see, lots of Funko Pops, that's for sure. And Tauntaun's pretty cool, I remember when that was new. And I really like that Darth Vader and Ben Kenobi set. I remember when that was new, and that's a really nice looking set. I wish the Darth Vader in that set were the later version instead of the one on the Hall of Fame body. Okay, so this is, I remember that we saw that vintage game. This is a reissue of the game and it has a Grand Moff Tarkin figure included. So that's a modern version of the game we saw earlier. And I can't tell what's new and vintage here. I'm not well versed on that. Lots of G.I. Joe. Oh, Turbo Man. Now, MIB Master Toy Museum recently did a video on this new Turbo Man figure. So if you're interested in that, check out his video at the MIB Master Toy Museum channel. And yes, I used to have uh, the original first issue turtles, <laughs> the four of them on first issue cards years ago. And those did sell big. Even back then, those, those are the only ones that really did sell big for me. You know, I got triple digits for each of those. But the other ones, forget it. No one wanted the other turtle stuff. I ended up donating a lot of it to Toys for Tots, just taking boxes of original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from Playmates. You know, individual figures that might sell for $100 now, I just dumped it into the Toys for Tots barrels just to get rid of it because no, no one wanted to buy it. <laughs> and I had boxes and boxes and boxes of turtles in my basement. I just wanted to get rid of it. More turtles. I think we're almost done here. Now, I like this NECA big chap alien. I might, be, I might buy that one of these days. I wonder how it's, I mean, it looks great in the box. I wonder how it is out of the box. Not that I would remove it, but I just wonder if it's built well. People criticize NECA, the build quality, but they, they look great in the box. But when you take them out, people say they're not so hot, but that alien really looks nice. I like that it looks compatible with the 70s Kenner alien, but it's not a retread. It's not a reissue, it's a new thing. Okay, this is the last bit. I think that ends our trip to the toy show. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I did, I think that was a good time. I enjoyed talking to all those people that I hadn't touched base with in a long time. I talked to Andy, you know, fairly often. He's a good friend. I talked to Tom, but I saw a lot of other people that I had not seen in a long time. And I think this was a pretty good show. I saw a lot of, uh, Decent toys, obviously a lot of new stuff, a lot of uh, Funko Pops, but there was also a lot of good vintage stuff and more obscure stuff. So I, I think it was a fun time. I hope you agree. hope you had a good time watching. Thanks a lot, and I will see you next time.